get ready for our missions offering. greet you this morning, you that are able to be here with us and those that are with us uh, in our live broadcast and the web TV broadcast. May the Lord richly bless you today and it's good to have you with us. Uh, and for those who may find us for the first time, um, these services are coming to you through the facilities of the Midwest Center of Truth. Northwest Arkansas in the Ozark Mountains. They are a ministry of CMI, Bible Research Center, and a production of CMI Audio Video Systems Network brought to you by Ustream. <laughs> Internet program. So we're glad to be with you this morning and glad to have each of you with us as well. Uh, we've had a week this week, uh, two services a day. Uh, some of those uh, have been live, but most of those have been recorded, and they will be available, oh, probably next week, I imagine. When will they be available? The Monday night and Wednesday night programs were live, but we had two sessions each, each day. And uh, so uh, they, they will they'll be up and, and uh, we'll be announcing it when, when, when they're available. Uh, each of those uh, would have, could have been live, but there's a lot of technical uh, problems still. Uh, when we, we go up with live programs and then at the same time are recording them, and it's the recorded part that sometimes drops and, and then messes up the whole thing. So, uh, and, but if, you, if, if, if they weren't recorded, then they'd be live and then they'd be gone. So we, we record them, and uh, that way we'll have them available on our website uh, from then on, and uh, also available for downloading, available for DVDs, and, uh, and then also available for CMI 24-7 at this particular time. So anyway, there's a number of reasons why we need to record what this morning, in fact, this is a live uh, broadcast, but it is also a recorded one. And uh, it seems like from time to time we, we, we are able to uh, get away with that and uh, uh, nothing drops. But uh, 
a lot of times, like for instance, during our conferences where we have three or four sessions a day all week long, and we, we try to bring that alive because we have a lot of people who are not here but are scattered throughout the country watching that conference. But we always have a real problem with the recorded part of that dropping. And uh, maybe one of these days technology will catch up with desire uh, and, uh, we, and, and that problem will be solved. But at any rate, we've had a, we've had a, a good time of, of teaching and the teaching has been centered upon the feast of uh, most of you would recognize if I say the feasts of Israel. Uh, they're the feasts of the Lord uh, set forth in Israel as, as, a, as, uh, as a testimony of His Son. But you see everything, ev ev everything, set forth of God from creation on is a testimony of His Son. But in the midst of all of that were these very, very uh, I don't know, 50 words are flooding through my mind. Just great, tremendous testimony of Christ that testifies to the nature, the character, and the substance of our salvation. And that being fulfilled in Christ who dwells in us. So the testimonies, the feasts are tremendous, tremendous testimonies uh, of that reality which we encounter and become partakers of in Christ himself. And we've been looking at those this week. Uh, Ole Anthony uh, has been our teacher, and he's still with us here this morning. We introduced him on Monday night and on Wednesday night, and, and, and uh, uh, as from Trinity Foundation, and, and uh, the name of their fellowship and church gathering there is The Block. The block, that's right, like a city block, the block. And a precious group of people that I have uh, known, uh, well, only since the early 70s, and those folks since they began to form. And I've uh, been privileged to uh, be partaker with them uh, throughout these years in the realities of the Lord Jesus Christ. So not only a brother but a friend and we've been happy to have him here this week uh, and in order to just gather these things up and because uh, you know Sunday morning uh, is, is, is one session and I know when I'm a lot of times out on the road Sunday mornings is the time that I kind of gather up loose ends. And I'm, uh, I'm often reminded of the Lord Jesus, and it may not have anything to do with what I'm talking about, but in his feeding the multitudes and then exercising through his disciples, a tremendous and I think much needed administration, spiritual administration, ministry administration, that is, go gather up the fragments, that nothing be lost. Uh, I'm a great one for, for gathering up fragments because I think that the Holy Spirit uh, is uh, the greatest one for gathering up fragments, so much of our understanding of, of our salvation. And not only throughout the church world, but with many who are knowing the Lord, but so much of it seems to be fragmented, still fragmented. 
and in what in what very little and minute way I comprehend anything my God of the greatness of the Lord Jesus I do believe that the administration of the fullness of time is that administration of the Spirit whereby all of the fragments of the testimonies, the fragments of the realities, the fragments of things that are true and yet in and of themselves are not truth, fragments that are realities but in and of themselves have no substance. I think he, he gathers up the fragments according to Paul's letter in his Ephesians and particularly in verse 9 and 10 having made known unto us the mystery of his will that through the administration of the fullness of the times together together in Christ all things in one both in heaven and in earth all things the gathering up and and as, as, as many of you know and anyone can know simply by looking at a little word search uh, gathering together gathering together that word that word has bound up with it the term comprehension so that these things are seen to be gathered up of, of the Spirit of God gathered and presented in one in the comprehension of one. Whatever is gathered into him can only truly be comprehended in the, in the knowing of him. You understand? There's not 50 million things in Christ. It's simply that the Father gathers all things together in Christ he is not 50 million things rather those 50 million things are summed up in one as one very simply peace joy that isn't what he gives that's who he is and you can and all of those fragments are the same thing all of those fragments, righteousness holiness I don't, I don't care what they are same thing when you finally come to comprehend them, it'll be in the face of Jesus Christ. It'll be through the comprehending of him as that. You understand? It's not a bunch of things. We, we, we have it fragmented. A bunch of things. A bunch of things. We have church doctrine, so-called, based upon eight things, 16 things, 24 things, whatever. <laughs> And it's all fragmented. And I found that even in what we call deeper life movements, it's still fragmented. You've got the kingdom message and the sonship message and, and the reconciliation message. And, and here we go. My goodness gracious, honey. There, there's one message given of God. It's the gospel. It comes by the revealing of his son in you. And that's it. He gathers everything up into his son. Darling, until Christ is revealed in us, we're dumb as doorknobs concerning anything spiritual. And that's just the truth of it. So, in like manner, I, in, when I'm in places, uh, kind of have a time of gathering up the fragments. And, and Ole had mentioned that he would like to do that this morning. And he also, had, and in doing so, he, he will be reading a document that he will uh, introduce to you and explain to you. We have had it here in the library for some time. Uh, it comes out from probably around 150 A.D. It, uh, is with, it is a great summation and presentation of the Passover. And... Uh, so that's what he'll be doing this morning. And I want him to come now and uh, just let the Lord uh, direct. Okay, here's the...
I got to get connected. Here's the microphone. Yeah, we got to get connected. I've always wanted to be connected. Are you? Well, now you're. No, I'm connected. You're about to be. But I need to pull up a chair because I'm old and crippled. Uh, I'll do the same thing. I'll pull up there. You can probably last on that about 30 that's, minutes or so. Oh, that's I, fine. I'll do it then. Yeah. When I was putting this on during the sessions this week, uh, I'd stand up and they'd still be taking pictures. And so I think you got some pictures of my belly. And But I, I tucked my shirt in today so you wouldn't see that, that disgusting thing. Um, My conversion experience was January 17th, 1972. And it was a wonderful, unbelievable, shocking, because it, 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 the part of it was my, I had to see my death. And I knew nothing about the Bible. I, I was expelled from well, I was kicked out of catechism class because I asked, I was in the Second World War. I mean, I wasn't in it, but that's when it happened. And they were telling me all about peace on earth that Jesus brought, and I said, where's the peace? And uh, I was expelled for, ans for asking that question and probably a few other things that I've forgotten. Then I was expelled from high school. beginning of my senior year because I refused to capitalize the word God on a world history exam. So I was a pagan of the pagans until that unbelievably wonderful, inexplicable moment in my life. Um, and I'd go to churches and visit and try to find a home and every time they said how to get something from God, I got sick to my stomach. That's hard to explain, but it was my way of discernment, or God's way in me. And I walked out of more places than you can imagine. But then I met J.W. He's the only one I've ever seen, ever known, that, thought, that saw and taught the same thing I did. Or saw. He's, I've said often to many people that he's the best preacher I've ever heard. But he's been my covering. He may not have known it, but he has been my covering since the very beginning. And so, I, I, the last thing in the world I wanted to do was teach. But circumstances created it so I had to, because I, 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 I ended up accepting that there couldn't be a ministry without a body. And I hated that, I hated that, because I wanted to be a Lone Ranger. But there can't be a ministry without a body. Now for, we started our, the Trinity Foundation organization as a, as a body of believers Probably the, the first few came about 1975, and then more and more came. But we started celebrating the, pe the feast in 1976. And now by now we celebrate all of the feasts of the Lord, including the bad ones like the Fast of Ab and the Fast of Tammuz. But we did it not because to try to get it right, because we never get anything right. But in these feasts, we saw a living picture of Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's what I tried to communicate this week. But it's all summed up in the Passover. The Passover preceded the law, but it included all the law. It, it was like the first revelation, in, if you will, of the fullness of Jesus Christ in the Jewish religion. Um, and so, this man, is called, he was Bishop of Sardi. He was a bishop then just meant over two or three or four small groups because the church then was no longer, it was, could, had to have at least 10 but no more than 20 people. So his word bishop, uh, well in, in that term, J.W. is a bishop. I'm a bishop because I'm over a few bodies. 
But that's kind of, that, that word doesn't mean like you go around wearing dresses and fancy hats. The word means that you're a greater servant. And so this man, the Bishop of Sardi, he's considered the first great orator in Christianity. And he wrote this Passover homily. And it was first given to others than his own group. He gave it to his own group for many years, and then others began to want it. So that's what we're going to study or listen to today. I never, ever write down what I'm going to say, but except today. I'm, I'm, it's, I didn't write this, but it is, to me, an unbelievable document. So you'll see me reading for a while. First of all, the scriptures about the Hebrew exodus has been read and the words of the mystery have been explained as to how the lamb was sacrificed and the people were saved. Therefore, understand this, O beloved, the mystery of the Passover is old and new, eternal and temporal. It is old because of the law, but new because of the logos. Temporal because of the type, but it's eternal because of grace. Corruptible because of the life of the Lord. Mortal because of his burial in the earth, but immortal because of his resurrection from the dead. The law is old, but the gospel is new. The type was for a time, but hallelujah, his grace is forever. The lamb was corruptible, the Lord is incorruptible, who was sacrificed as a lamb, but who was resurrected as God. For although he was led to the sacrifice as a lamb, yet he was not a lamb. And though he was a la as a lamb without voice, yet indeed he was not a lamb. The one was the model, the other the truth. For God replaced the lamb and a man the sheep, but in the man was Christ who contains all things. Hence the sacrifice of the lamb and the sending of the lamb to the slaughter and the celebration of Passover and the writing of the law, each led to and issued in Jesus Christ. For indeed the, the law in the gospel, the old and the new, both coming forth together from Zion and Jerusalem, and the commandment issued in grace, and the type in the finished truth, and the lamb and the son and the sheep and a man and the man in God, for the one who was born as son and led to slaughter as lamb and sacrificed as a sheep and buried as a man rose up from the dead as God. Since he is by nature both God and man, he is everything. And that he judges, he is law. And that he teaches, he is logos. And that he saves, he is grace. And that he begets, he is the father. And that he is begotten, he is the son. And that he suffers, he is the sheep. And that he bur is buried, he is a man. And that he comes to life again, he is God. Such is this mystery of Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Now comes the mystery of the Passover, even as it stands written in the Torah. Just as it has been read aloud earlier, but I will clearly set forth the significance of the words of the scripture, showing how God commanded Moses in Egypt when he had made his decision to bind Pharaoh under the lash, but to release Israel from the lash through the hand of Moses. For see to it, he says, that you take a flawless and perfect lamb and that you sacrifice it in the evening with the sons of Israel, and that you eat it at night and in haste. You are not to break any of its bones. You will do it like this, he says. In a single night, you will eat it by families, your loins girded and your staves, staves in your hand. For this is the Lord's Passover, an eternal reminder to the sons of Israel. Then take the blood of the lamb and anoint the front door of your houses by placing upon the post of your entranceway the sign of the blood in order to ward off the angel. For behold, I will strike Egypt, and in a single night she will be made childless from beast to man. Then when Moses sacrificed the lamb and completed the mystery at night together with the sons of Israel, he sealed the doors of their houses in order to protect the people and to ward off the angel of death. 
But when the lamb was sacrificed and the Passover consumed and the mystery completed and the people made glad and Israel sealed, then arrived the angel to strike Egypt, who was neither initiated into the mystery, participant of the Passover, nor sealed by the blood, nor protected by the spirit, but who was an enemy and an unbeliever. In a single night, the angel struck and made Egypt childless. For when the angel had encompassed Israel and had seen her sealed with the blood of the sheep, he advanced against Egypt and by means of grief subdued the stubborn Pharaoh, clothing him not with a cloak of mourning, nor with a torn mantle, but with all of Egypt torn in mourning for her firstborn. For all Egypt plunged in troubles and calamities and tears and lamentations came to Pharaoh in utter sadness, not in appearance only, but also in soul, having not only her garments torn, but her tender breasts as well. Indeed, it was possible to observe an extraordinary sight. In one place, people beating their breasts, in another, those wailing, and in the middle of them, Pharaoh mourning, sitting in sackcloth and cinders, shrouded in darkness as in a funeral garment, girded with all Egypt, as with a tunic of grief. For Egypt clothed Pharaoh as a cloak of wailing. Such was the mantle that had been woven for his royal body. With just a cloak did the angel of righteousness clothe the self-willed Pharaoh. With bitter man mourning, excuse me, with bitter mournful mournfulness, with thick darkness and with childlessness. For that angel warred against the firstborn of Egypt indeed. Swift and insatiate was the death of the firstborn. And a strange trophy was seen raised over the firstborn, dead in one moment. And the saving of Moses became the slaying of the firstborn of Egypt. If you listen to the narration of this event, you will be astonished. For these things befell the Egyptians a long night and darkness that was touchable and death which touched and an angel who oppressed and hell which devoured their firstborn. But you must listen to something still more extraordinary and terrifying in the darkness which could be touched was hidden death which could not be touched. And the ill-starred Egyptians touched and the ill-starred Egyptians touched the darkness while death on the watch touched the firstborn of all of Egypt. As it, and as the angel had commanded, therefore, if anyone touched the darkness, he was led out to the angel of death. Indeed, one firstborn touching a dark body with his hand and utterly frightened in his soul, cried aloud in misery and in terror, what has my right hand laid hold of? And what does my and why does my soul tremble? And who cloaks my whole body with darkness? If you are my father, help me. If my mother feels sympathy for me. If my brother speak to me, if my friend do me no harm, if mine enemy go away from me since I am a firstborn son. And before the firstborn was silent, the long silence held him in its power, saying, You are mine, O firstborn. I, the silence of death, am your destiny. And another firstborn, taking note of the capture of the firstborn, denied his identity, so that he might not die a bitter death. I am not firstborn, son, he claimed. I am the thirdborn. But he who could not be deceived touched that firstborn and he fell forward in silence in a single moment. The firstborn fruit of the Egyptians was destroyed. The first one conceived, the first one born, the first one sought after. The one chosen was dashed to the ground, not only of that of men but of the irrational animals as well. A lowing was heard in the fields of the earth, of cattle bellowing for their nurslings, a cow standing over her calf, and a mare over her colt. And the rest of the cattle, having just given birth to their offspring, with swollen milk, was swollen with milk, were lamenting bitterly and piously, piteously, 
for their firstborn. And there was a wailing and lamentation because of the destruction of the men, because of the destruction of the firstborn who were dead. And all Egypt stank because of the unburied bodies. Indeed, one could see a frightful spectacle of the Egyptians. <clears throat> there were mothers disheveled with hair, with fathers who had lost their minds, wailing aloud in terrifying fashion in the Egyptian tongue. O oh, wretched persons that we are, we have lost our firstborn in a single moment. And they were striking their breasts with their hands, beating in time, hammer-like fashion to the dance for their dead. Such was the misfortune which encompassed all of Egypt. In an instant it made her childless, but Israel all the while was being protected by the sacrifice of the lamb and truly was being illumined by its blood which was shed for the death of the lamb who was found to be a rampart for the people. Oh, an expressible mystery. The sacrifice of the lamb was found to be the salvation of the people. Hallelujah. And the death of the lamb became the life of the people, for its blood warded off the angel. Tell me, O angel, at what were you turned away? At the sacrifice of a lamb or the life of the Lord? At the death of the lamb or the type of the Lord? And the blood, at the blood of the lamb or by the spirit of the living Lord? Clearly, you were turned away because you saw the mystery of the Lord taking place in the Lamb, the life of the Lord in the sacrifice of the Lamb, the type of the Lord in the death of the Lamb. And for this reason, you did not strike Israel, but it was Egypt alone that you made childless. What was this extraordinary mystery? It was Egypt struck to destruction, but Israel kept for salvation. Now listen to the meaning of that mystery. Beloved, no speech or event takes place without a pattern or a design. Every event and speech involves a pattern, encounters a parable. That which is spoken, a pattern, but that which happens, a prefiguration, in order that as the event is disclosed to the prefiguration, so also speech may be brought to expression through its outline. Without the model, no work arise, of art arises. Is not that which is to come, it, the, it, it is not that which is to come into existence. Is not that which has come to in existence, seen through the model which tip, typifies it. For this reason, a pattern of that which is to be is made, either of wax or clay or of wood, in order that by the smallness of the model destined to be destroyed might be seen that thing which is to arise from it higher in its size and mightier in power and more beautiful in appearance, more elaborate in ornamentation. So whenever the thing arises for which the model was made, that then that which carried the image of that future thing is destroyed. It is no longer of use. Since it has transformed Admitted its resemblance to that which is by nature true. Therefore, that once that which once was valuable is now without valuable, without value, because that which is truly valuable has appeared. For each thing has its own time. There is a distinct time for the type, and there is a distinct time for the material, and there is a distinct time for the truth. You construct the model, you want this because you see in it the image of the future work. You procure the material for the model, you want this. On account of that which it is going to arise because of it, you complete the work and cherish it alone. For only in it do you see both the type and the truth. Therefore, if it was like this with models of perishable objects, so indeed will it be also with imperishable objects. If it was like this with earthly things, indeed, so also will it be, or is it, with heavenly things. For even the Lord's salvation and his truth were prefigured in the people of Israel, and the teaching of the gospel who proclaimed in advance by the law. Israel therefore became the model for the bride, and the law a parabolic sketch. But the logos became the explanation of the law and its fulfillment. 
while the bride became the place of its realization. Therefore, the type had value prior to its realization, and the parable was wonderful prior to its interpretation. That is to say, Israel had value before the bride came on the scene. The law was wonderful before the Logos was brought to light. But when the bride came on the scene and the Logos was set forth, the type lost its value by surrendering its significance. Truth and the law were fulfilled. Hallelujah. By surrendering its significance to the Logos. Just as the type had lost its significance by surrendering its image to that which is true by nature. And as the parable lost its significance by being illumined through the interpretation, so indeed also the law was fulfilled when the Logos was brought to light. And Israel lost their significance when the bride came on the scene and the type was destroyed when the Lord appeared. Therefore those things which once had value today are without value because that which has true value has appeared. This was 150 B.C. or about that they were saying this. How far has the church been apostatized? For at one, I would, I'm sorry, I added something that was, now we're going back. For at one time the sacrifice of the sheep was valuable, but now it is without value because of the life of the Lord. The death of the sheep was once valuable, but now it is without value because of the salvation of the Lord. The blood of the sheep was once valuable, but it is now without value because of the spirit of the Lord. The silent lamb was once valuable, but now it has no value because the blameless son has appeared. The temple here below was once valuable, but now it is without value because of the new Jerusalem from above. The meager inheritance of land once had value, and now it is without value because of the abundant grace. For not in one place alone, nor in yet narrow confines has the glory of the Lord been established, but his grace has now been poured out upon the uttermost parts of the world and there the Almighty God has taken up his dwelling place through Christ Jesus, to whom be the glory forever. Oh my God, my God, how far have we fell? Now that you have heard the interpretation of the type and of that which corresponds to it and of the retribution, hear now also the structure of the mystery. What is the Passover? Its name is derived from that event to celebrate Passover, but that in turn is derived from the word that means to suffer. Therefore then learn who the sufferer is and who is he who suffers along with the sufferer. Why indeed was the Lord present upon the earth? In order that having clothed himself with the one who suffers, he might lift him up to the heights of heaven. In the, in the beginning, when God made heaven and earth and everything in them through his word, he himself formed man from the earth by the intermediary of his word and shared it with that from his own breath <coughs> and himself placed him in paradise, <coughs> excuse me, which was eastward in Eden. And there he lived most luxuriously. Then by way of command, God gave them this law. For your food you may eat from any tree, but you are not to eat from that tree which knows good and evil. For on the day that you eat from it, in dying you shall die. But man who is by nature capable of receiving good and evil a soil of the earth is capable of receiving seeds from both sides. Welcome the hostile and greedy counselor 
and by having eaten from that tree, transgressed the command, disobeyed God, and as a consequence, was cast out into this world as unto a prison of the condemned. And he would, had fathered children and become very old and returned to the earth through the having tasted of the tree. An inheritance was left behind him for his children and us as humans. Indeed, he left his children an inheritance, not of chastity, but unchastity, not of immortality, but of corruptibility, not of honor, but dishonor, not of freedom, but slavery, not of sovereignty, but tyranny, not of life, but of death, not of salvation, but of destruction. Extraordinary and terrifying indeed was the destruction of men upon the earth, for the following things happened to them. They were carried off as slaves by sin, the tyrant, and were led away into the turmoil of desire, where they were totally engulfed in insatiable sensual pleasures, by adultery, by unchastity, by debauchery, by inordinate desire, by avarice, by murders, by bloodshed, by the tyranny of wickedness, by the tyranny of lawlessness. For even a father of his own accorded, accord lifted up a dagger against his son, and the son used his hands against the father, and the impious person smote the breast that nourished him, and the brother murdered brother, and host wronged guests, and friend assassinated friend. And one man cut the throat of another with his tyrannous right hand. Therefore all men and women on earth became either murderers or parasites or killers of their children, and yet a thing still more dreadful and extraordinary was to be found. A mother attacked the flesh which she gave birth to. A mother attacked those whom her breast had nourished, and she buried in her belly the fruit of her belly. Indeed, the ill-starred mother became a dreadful tomb when she devoured the child which she had borne in her womb. But in addition to this, there were yet to be found among men many things more monstrous and terrifying and brutal. Father cohabits with his child and son with his mother and brother and sister and male with male, each using lust, each lusting after the wife of his neighbor. And because of these things, sin exalted, and which because it was death's collaborator entered first into the souls of men and prepared as food for him the bodies of the dead. And every soul sin left his mark. And those in whom, it was, in whom it placed its mark, all alike she devoured to death. Therefore all flesh fell under the power of sin and every body under the dominion of death and every soul was driven, driven from his house of flesh Indeed, that which had been taken from the earth was dissolved back again into the earth. And that which had been given from God was locked up in Hades. And that beautiful ordered arrangement was dissolved when the body was separated. Yes, man was divided up into parts by death. Yes, an extraordinary misfortune and captivity enveloped him. <clears throat> he was dragged away captive under the shadow of death, and the image of the Father remained there desolate. And for this reason, therefore, the mystery of the Passover has been completed in the body of the Lord. Indeed, the Lord, prearranging his own suffering, and the patriarchs and the prophets and the whole people of God, giving his sanction to them through the law and the prophets, for that which was to exist in a new and grandiose fashion prepares beforehand the work of faith being seen from afar in order that when it should come into existence one might, one might attain to faith just because it had been predicted so long in advance. So indeed also the mystery of the Lord predicted long in advance by means of type but seen today has brought about faith just because it has taken place as predicted. <clears throat> and yet men have taken it as something completely new. Well, the truth of the matter is the mystery of the Lord is both old and new. Old insofar as it involved the type, but new insofar as it concerns grace. And what is more, if you pay to close attention to the type, to the Torah, you will see the real thing through its fulfillment accordingly if you desire to see the mystery of the Lord, pay close attention to Abel, who likewise was put to death, to Isaac, who likewise was bound hand and foot, 
to Joseph, who likewise was sold, to Moses, who likewise was exposed, to David, who likewise was hunted down, to the prophets, who likewise suffered for the sake of Christ. <clears throat> pay, pay close attention to Enoch and Elijah, who never died. Pay close attention also to the lamb which was sacrificed in Egypt, to the one who smote Egypt and saved Israel by his blood. For the mystery of the Lord was proclaimed Moses indeed said to his people, Surely you will see your life suspended before your eyes night and day, but you surely will not believe on your life. Then David said, Why were the nations haughty and the people concerned about nothing? The kings of the earth presented themselves and the princes assembled themselves together against the Lord and against his anointed. And in Jeremiah, I am an innocent lamb being led away to be sacrificed. They plotted evil against me and said, Come, let us exterminate him from the land of the living so that his name will never be recalled. And in Isaiah, he was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a lamb is silent in the presence of the one who shares it. He did not open his mouth. Therefore, who will tell his offspring? And indeed, there were many other types and many other things proclaimed by numerous prophets concerning the mystery of the Passover, which is Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen. When this one from heaven came to the earth for the sake of the one who suffers, and had clothed himself with that very one through the womb of a virgin, and having come forth as man, he accepted the suffering of the sufferer through his body which was capable of suffering and he destroyed those human sufferings by his spirit which was incapable of dying. <clears throat> he killed death which had put man to death. For this one who was led away as a lamb and was sacrificed as a sheep by himself delivered us from the ruin of this world as from the land of Egypt, and released us from bondage to the devil, as from the hand of Pharaoh, and sealed our souls by his own spirit, and the members of our body by his own blood. This is the one who covered death with shame, who bound and plummeted the devil into mourning as Moses did Pharaoh. This is the one who smote lawlessness and deprived injustice of her offspring as Moses deprived Egypt. This is the one who delivered us from slavery to freedom, from darkness to light, from death unto life, from tyranny to an eternal kingdom of grace, who made us a new priesthood, a special people. This one is the Passover of our salvation. This is the one who patiently endured many things and many people. This is the one who was murdered in Abel, and bound as a sacrifice in Isaac, and exiled in Jacob, and sold in Joseph, and exposed in Moses, and sacrificed in the Lamb, and hunted down in David, and dishonored by the prophets, in the prophets. This is the one who became a human in a virgin, who was hanged on the tree, whose bones were not broken, who buried in the earth, who was resurrected from among the dead, and who raised up mankind out of the grave below to the heights of heaven. This is the lamb that was slain. This is the lamb that was silent. This is the one who was born of Mary, that beautiful lamb. This is the one who was taken from the flock, who was dragged to sacrifice, who <clears throat> was killed in the evening and buried at night. The one who was not broken while on the tree, who did not see dissolution in the earth, who rose from the dead, and who raised mankind up from the grave below. This is the one that was murdered. But where was he murdered? In the very center of Jerusalem. Why? Because he healed their lame and cleansed their lepers or guided their blind and gave the blind light or raised up their dead? Was it for this reason he suffered? Somewhere it has been written in the Law and the Prophets, you paid me back evil for good, and my soul with barrenness and wicked counsel, plotting evil against me, saying, let us bind this just man, because he is troublesome to us. O wicked injustice, O Israel, what have you done? 
You desired the one who had honored you. You held in contempt the one who held you in esteem. You denied the one who publicly acknowledged you. You renounced the one who proclaimed you his own. You killed the one who made you live. What have you done, O Israel? Has it not been written, for your benefit do not shed innocent blood, lest you die a terrible death? Come, he says, Israel, thou hast slain the Lord. Why? Yes, it was necessary for him to die, but you'd have deceived yourself, O Israel, rationalizing thus about the death of our Lord. Yes, it was necessary for him to suffer. Yes, but not by you. It was necessary for him to be judged, but not by you. It was necessary for him to be crucified, but not by you, not by your own right hand. O Israel, you ought to have cried aloud to God with this voice, O Lord, if it was necessary for your son to suffer, and if this was your will, let him suffer indeed, but not at our hands. Let him suffer at the hands of strangers. Let him be judged by the uncircumcised. Let him be crucified by strangers' right hands, but not by mine. But you, O Israel, did not cry out to God with this voice. You did not absolve yourself of guilt before the Lord, nor you, were you persuaded by his works. The withered hand, which was restored whole to its body, did not persuade you, nor did the eyes of the blind, which were opened by his hand, nor did paralyzed bodies restored to health through his voice, nor did that most extraordinary miracle persuade you, namely the dead man raised to life from the tomb, where he had already been lying for four days, indeed dismissing these things. You, to your detriment, prepared the following for sacrifice of the Lord at eventide, sharp nails and false witnesses and fetters and scourges and vinegar and gall and a sword and affliction and all as though it were for a blood-stained robber. For you brought to him scourges for his body and thorns for his head. You bound those beautiful hands which had formed you from the earth, and that beautiful mouth which had nourished you with life you filled with gall. You killed your Lord at the time of the great feast. Surely you were filled with gaiety, but he was filled with hunger. You drank wine and ate bread. He had a sad countenance. You were full of joy. He was full of trouble. You sang songs, but he was judged. You issued the command, he was crucified. You danced, he was buried. You laid down in a soft bed, but he in a tomb in a cave. O lawless Israel, why did you commit this extraordinary crime of casting your Lord into new suffering? your master, the one who formed you, the one who made you, the one who honored you, the one who called you Israel. But you were found not truly to be the is true Israel, for you did not see God. You did not recognize the Lord. You did not know, O Israel, for this one was the firstborn of God, the one who was begotten before the morning star, the one who caused the light to shine forth, the one who made bright the day, the one who parted the darkness the one who established the beginning, the one who suspended the earth, the one who quenched the abyss, the one who stretched out the firmament, the one who formed the universe, the one who fixed the stars in heaven, the one who caused those luminaries to shine, the one who made the angels in heaven, the one who established their thrones in that place, the one who by himself fashioned man upon the earth. This was the one who chose you the one who guided you from Adam to Noah, from Noah to Abraham, from Abraham to Isaac and Jacob and the 12 patriarchs. This was the one who guided you into Egypt and guarded you, and he himself kept you well supplied there. This is the one who lighted your root with a column of fire and provided shade for you by means of a cloud, the one who divided the Red Sea and led you across and scattered your enemy abroad. This is the one who provided you with manna from heaven, the one who gave you water to drink from a rock, the one who established your laws in Horeb, the one who gave you an inheritance in the land, the one who sent his prophets to you, the one who raised up your kings. This is the one who came to you, the one who healed your suffering ones, who resurrected your dead. This is the one you sinned against. This is the one whom you wronged. 
This is the one whom you killed. This is the one whom you sold for silver. O oh, ungrateful Israel, come here and be judged before me for your ingratitude. How high a price did you place in being created by him? How a high a price did you place in the discovery of your fathers? How high a price did you place on the descent into Egypt through the noble Joseph? How high a price did you place on the ten plagues? How high a price did you place on the nightly column of fire and daily cloud and the crossing of the Red Sea? How high a price did you give place on the gift of manna from heaven and the gift of water, water from the rock and the gift of the law in Horeb and the gift of land as an inheritance and all the benefits accorded you there? How high a price did you place on your suffering people whom he healed when he was present? Set me a price on that withered hand which restored whole to the body. Put me a price on the men born blind whom he led by light by his voice. Put me a price on those who lay dead whom he raised alive from the, moon, from the tomb. Inestimable are his benefits that come to you from him, but you shamefully have paid him back with ingratitude. Returning to him evil for good and affliction for joy and death for life. A person for whom you should have died. Furthermore, if the king of some nation is captured by an enemy, a war started because of him. Fortifications are shattered because of him. Cities are plundered because of him. Ransom is sent because of him. Ambassadors are commissioned because of him. In order that he might be surrendered, so that either he might be returned if living or that he might be buried if dead. But you, quite to the contrary, voted against your Lord whom indeed the nations worshipped and the uncircumcised admired and the foreigners glorified, over whom Pilate washed his hands. But as for you, you killed this one at the time of the great feast. Therefore the feast of, uh, of unleavened bread has become bitter to you, just as it is written, you will eat unleavened bread with bitters. Bitter to you are the nails which you pointed, bitter to you the tongue which was sharpened, bitter to you the false witnesses whom you brought, Bitter to you are the fetters which you prepared. Bitter to you are the scourges which you wove. Bitter to you is Judas whom you furnished with pay. Bitter to you is Herod whom you followed. Bitter to you is Caiaphas whom you obeyed. Bitter to you is gall which you, which you made ready. Bitter to you is the vinegar which you produced. Bitter to you are the thorns which you plucked. Bitter to you are your own hands which you blood, bloodied in the midst of Jerusalem. Pay attention now, all families of the nations, and observe. An extraordinary murder has taken place in the center of Jerusalem. In a city devoted to God's law, in the city of the Hebrew, in the city of the prophets, in the city of the just. And who has been murdered, and who was the murderer? I'm ashamed to give the answer, but give it I must. For if this murder had taken place at night, or if, it had been slain, if he had been slain in a desert place, it might be well to keep silent, but it was in the middle of the city, in the center of the city, while all were looking on, that the unjust murder of this just person took place. Thus he was lifted up upon the tree, and an inscription was affixed, identifying the one who had been murdered. Who was he? Who was he? Who is he? It is painful to tell, but it is more dreadful not to tell. Therefore hear and tremble because of him for whom the earth trembled. The one who hung the earth in place is himself hanged. The one who fixed the heavens in place is himself impaled. The one who firmly fixed all things is himself firmly fixed to the tree. The Lord is insulted. God has been murdered. The king of Israel has been destroyed by the right hand of Israel. O oh, frightful murderer, O oh, unheard of injustice, the Lord is disfigured and he is not deemed worthy of a cloak for his naked body so that he might be seen, not, so he might not be seen exposed. For th and for this reason, the stars turned and fled and the day grew quite dark in order to hide that naked person hanging on the tree, darkening the body of the Lord the eyes of not just the body of the Lord but the eyes of men 
Yea, even the people did not tremble, the earth trembled. Though the people were not afraid, the heavens grew quite frightened, and all the people did not tear their garments. The angels tore theirs. And although the people did not lament, the Lord uttered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. Why was it like this, O Israel? You did not tremble for the Lord, you did not fear for the Lord, you did not lament for the Lord, yet lamented for your firstborn. You did not tear your garments at the crucifixion of the Lord, yet you tore your garments for your own who were murdered. You forsook the Lord. You were not found by him. You dashed the Lord to the ground. You too were dashed to the ground and now lie quite dead. But he arose from the dead and mounted up to the heights of heaven when the Lord had clothed himself with humanity and suffered for the sake of the sufferer and had been bound for the sake of the in prison and had been judged for the sake of the condemned and buried for the sake of the one who was buried. He arose from the dead and cried aloud with this voice, Who is he that contends with me? Let him stand in opposition to me. I set the condemned man free. I gave life I, to the dead. I gave the dead man life. I raise up the one who had been entombed. Who is my, my opponent? I say the Christ. I am the one who destroyed death and triumphed over the enemy, enemy and trampled Hades underfoot and bound the strong one and carried off man to the heights of heaven. I say the Christ, therefore come all families of the earth. You who have been befouled with sin, receive forgiveness for your sin. I am your forgiveness. I am the Passover of your salvation. I am the lamb which was sacrificed for you. I am your ransom. I am your baptism. I am your light. I am your savior. I am your, li your, your life. I am your your resurrection, I am your light, I am your king, I am your wisdom, I am your sanctification, I am all things that are needed by you. I have led you up to the heights of heaven, I raise you up there to the mercy seat, I show you the eternal father, I raised you up by my right hand, this is the one who made the heaven and the earth. And who in the beginning created man, who was proclaimed through the law and the prophets, who became human by a virgin, who was hanged upon the tree, who was buried in the earth, who was resurrected from the dead, who ascended to the heights of heaven, who sits at the right hand of the Father, who has authority to judge and to save everything, through whom the Father created everything. From the beginning of the world to the end of the age, this is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the dead. This is an inscribable mystery and an incomprehensible end. This is the Christ. This is the King. This is Je Jesus. This is the General. This is the Lord. This is the one who rose you from the dead. This is the one who sits at the right hand of the Father. He bears the Father and is born by the Father to whom be glory and power forever. This is the Passover of Melito. Peace be to the one who wrote it and to the one who reads and to the one who hears and to those all who love the Lord in simplicity of heart who now understand the mystery of the Passover. I wish, uh, I wish that could be widely distributed in the churches around the world, but I'm afraid that we'd have a whole lot more crucifixions if he did that. This is, I mean, I'm speechless. What more can you say? Mr. Brother Lumen, my friend, my brother, my covering, Come up and save me from any more talking. Or do I just say, take it, big guy? Do I just say, take it, big guy, and then quit? That'll be fine. Take it, big guy.
All right.